So the first Bioshock, you could on the one hand say, well, it's, it's doing all these things that are smart. You have like these interesting twists and you have a setting that's like more imaginative and thoughtful than what a lot of people do and all that. And that's all true. Yeah. And relative to the background of most games being produced, it stands out in that way, okay? But you can't go up to like a reasonably well-educated person who's a random sample of society and give them Bioshock as a deep and meaningful work. Because when you go play it, what you're actually doing 95% of the time is shooting guys in the face. And then like 5% of the time, the other stuff comes in, That's right? True. Um, and that doesn't, like, Catcher in the Rye has like 0% shooting guys in the <laughs> face, right? And so that's kind of what I'm saying is that, and that ties into a little bit into, into my Twitter rant from earlier, is just that if Catcher in the Rye is a really interesting story, something like, I don't want to single out Bioshock, but games like that, that, that are a, a, like a, um, have a baseline of like a first person shooter or something, and then have some story bits that are interesting, they don't live up to the same standard. They simply don't, because you're shooting guys in the face all the time. And that has an impact on the story. And the, we have a problem as designers in that we've trained people to expect to shoot hundreds of guys in the face. And you can't, you can't do, so, okay, so let me, let me switch away from Bioshock to another game that I, I really enjoyed, Red Dead Redemption. Okay. I had a lot of fun with it. I thought, I was very glad that they made it. And I'm glad they tried to do some emotional things or some poignant things. But the ending to that game was totally absurd, okay? <laughs> because they have this long plot where for 20, hour, 20 hours, you're trying to work your way up and, and you know, get to the right position as this character. And because it's in the realm of an open world shooter, it involves shooting a lot of guys. And it, the stat screen tells you how many guys yeah. you've shot. I think I shot 860 guys. <laughs> Imagine a movie that's trying to be a serious drama. Just picture that. A serious drama where the main character shoots 860 guys and then goes home to his family at the end and you try to have this touching moment where he's caring for his family. It simply doesn't work because you've changed the value of human life. Right? Like, part of that shooting 860 guys was like burning down a village of poor peasants so that you could like get in with the Mexican army, right? And like throwing Molotov cocktails into their house and stuff. Which like, those are families just like your family that they're trying to have this poignant moment with at the end, right? So I think <clears throat> that poignant moment thing is good. Mm -hmm. It does not work in that kind of a game. It simply doesn't. And so, <clears throat> You know, when we come along as game critics and say, whoa, this is amazing, right? I, I don't remember if people said that about Red Dead Redemption. Yeah, they probably did. did. Yeah. I don't know. When we say that, it only makes sense to people who are immersed in this bubble of video games and surrounded by games that don't even have that at all and where you're just shooting guys in the face, right? But then if you turn around and, like, say, say you met somebody who's, like, been a monk or something, right? and they live in the monastery and they read books. And you show them Red Dead Redemption and say this is a really meaningful game, they're not gonna see it that way, right? So I think that's the most valuable thing that, that game developers can have and that critics can also have is the ability to step outside this bubble and see games from outside the bubble, mm -hmm. right? Um, it's useful to be in that bubble and un be immersed in yeah. the history of games and understand it, because otherwise you're uninformed, right? But you need to be able to step back and forth across the border and evaluate things as a human being who doesn't, you know, play first-person shooters all the time. Yeah. I think that's very useful.